next thing I'm going to do is to place or mount my flight controller, my receiver. I will be using the Radiolink R10D because I'm using a Radiolink transmitter. This also comes with a power return module, um, basic telemetry on the battery. But uh, yeah, now the problem we face is, and a lot of people have commented on this, that this frame doesn't have a lot of space. Now that little center plate, many people raise above and then use that to mount your flight controllers, etc. on. I've chosen to keep it down there and um, to hide all the wires and just keep things a little neater. And I will be using what is traditionally used to mount the battery on. This is the, the, the battery rail. Now, I have ordered a, a hanging inverted battery rail for this uh, frame. And uh, I'm just waiting for that to arrive, but I will be using that. So I will be mounting my battery on the bottom as part of the rail system. I'm going to be placing this on top and I will be using this to mount my flight controller. I, would, I want it uh, in the center. Um, that's just me. And it gives me access to everything that I uh, want to get to. This plate is originally seems to have been designed to be placed this way around. Um, and for that purpose, it comes with six of these arms or standoffs. Let me just take them out of the packaging here and show you. Right. These two are not included. These I made up, but I'll show you now why. Now, originally, you would mount two there and then the other others here for a six-way configuration. Because I'm turning this whole thing like this, I have space for there and then on this side as well at the far edges. But that requires eight of these. However, you are only provided with six. So I made up these two additional ones using nylon standoffs. Now I have a, a pack of nylon standoffs and if anyone is interested, oh, you can get these from so many places. They're available on Gearbest, on Banggood, on AliExpress. Um, most, some RC shops also supply them. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive and yes, if you have a set like this, you can make up your own little standoffs to the size and spacing you need. So yes, that is how I've made two additional ones just for that little bit of extra support. But anyway, let's go ahead and um, get this all mounted up. I'm first going to place the standoffs. And there we go, we've got six mountings in place and ready. Let's get the top half of this thing and just place it over. Right, that aligns beautifully. I'm just going to turn it a little bit this way. Let's start with the plastic, or shall I say the nylon screws. And uh, the reason I want to do the nylon ones first, there's only two of them. And uh, I don't want to keep picking up the nylon one when I should be picking up the metal ones. Right, so I'm going to keep that head close at hand. And let's just check the head size of these. That's a two millimeter head. I'm going to go to the far side first, just to hold on to. Not turning it, turning it in all the way. And there we go. That is very sturdy. It's not. Going, I can actually pick it up from there, and I'm quite confident that picking it up from there is not going to ever damage it. Right. Let's we'll just put our tools away. And that's what it looks like. So basically, we are going to be. There's the forward. That's going to be mounted in the center there. Don't worry about these screws, which are now seem to be slightly in in uh, in the way, because we I'm going to be using. Uh, let me just find it on the table. Oh, it's way over there. I will be using a high quality 3M double-sided tape 
to mount the flight controller board onto that. Now you don't want to use the cheap stuff, use decent. You can use, the, there's even better stuff, you know, Zeal and uh, Moon Gel and all kinds of weird uh, uh, anti-vibration mounts and things. Um, I actually do have an anti-vibration mount which I have ordered but which has not arrived yet. But uh, when that does arrive, I will uh, do another video on how I install that. But for now, just to get this thing set up and get everything going, or for those who choose not to order the anti-vibration mounting, we use the double-sided tape. This is the 3M double-sided tape. It's not cheap stuff. Uh, the cheap stuff uh, can lose its grip. This stuff grips pretty much forever. Right, that's going to be our next step. Before I continue, um, I just want to show you something interesting. Now, I've got my little tester here, my, my multimeter. And uh, what I want to show you is the reason, because I know sooner or later someone's going to ask me why I didn't mount my power distribution board onto that bottom plate with the the contacts the way I had them why did I have the wires to the top and the solder to the bottom and why I put the plastic at the bottom now I put my wires in the front of the top because that forces everything else away from them and the connection to the bottom because carbon fiber which this frame is made of is conductive so if you have any solder points touching this now this goes goes for anything else that you are going to mount on this if you have any solder points which are in contact with a carbon fiber you are creating a short let me just demonstrate that I'm going to going to switch on my um, multimeter here I'm just going to put it here one side so Let's, let's hope that other camera can actually see it, but it's not critical. You can hear it. And I'm going to select any two points on my carbon fiber. There you have it. Now, even the top one and the bottom one are in contact with each other. Do make sure that you do not have any soldered points in contact with your carbon fiber it is conductive right that being said I've now decided I'm going to mount the flight controller as close as possible to the center of gravity now how do you know what the center of gravity of this thing is now I have tried to keep it as close as possible to that so if you can pick it up there and it, it pretty much balances on itself that is 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 good now just to show you let's actually open up the arms as well okay open up all the arms <coughs> and let's test the center of gravity again and you know what it doesn't need to be absolutely 100 percent perfect but this is where i want to keep it so yeah that's going to be my center of gravity and that is where i want to keep my flight controller i'm going to take this according to the length of uh the flight controller I'm going to put double layers of this tape down and as you can see from that hole to that hole that's approximately the length I'm going to make it just slightly shorter than that I'm going to put strip on that side strip on that side and double double that up again okay now to make my life a little easier the flight controller one side just turn this one to the side Okay, there you go, that's our first strip. Now when uh, my anti-vibration mount one day arrives, then I will be pulling this all off and putting that on, but you know, this is good enough for now anyway. That one. And there we go. That is my dull sided tape. And now you see when you, you try and 
the stick this down that lifts up and that is why I have this little piece of velcro or hook and loop as it <laughs> is also called by a lot of people and that just keeps that down so that I don't every time have to cut off that little piece because it has become damaged or full of grit and grime my little trick right let us get ahead and mount our flight controller now just cleaning this off with your finger is not good because you are actually adding a residue of oil which over time may release from there so I like to use you can use rubbing alcohol or something else just clean that off with a microfiber cloth I've got this old one which I've been using for a long time but it's still good for these type of things it's electronics etc um, I'm going to take a bit of this electro, electro cleaner you might have seen this in some of my previous videos it's great stuff this can is almost empty it's time for a new one spray it onto the and that cleans off anything and everything it is very quick drying so you don't have to wait forever for this stuff to dry you can better give it a bit of a blow and there you go it's all off right we have our hexacopter pointing to the front we have a forward on this side and we are going to be sticking it down right there right, we'll pull off the, that our bottom has been <laughs> cleaned and I'm going to aim it down try and keep it as straight as possible there we go that is the flight control. I'm just going to give it a bit of pressure just to keep it down there. I'm going to give it a bit of a angle to the sides. That should be great and will last you the lifetime of your quadcopter or hexacopter. The next thing I want to do um, before I mount the receiver and all the other things is just connect up these output wires and uh, I just want to show you here yeah. this is the instructions that you receive with your tarot frame and they have the motor numbers wrong if you are going to be using a audiocopter or APM controller now, let me just show you that a little closer there that is wrong because they show motor one, two, three, four uh, in in this. Uh, the, the, the spins are correct, but the motor numbering is wrong. So I'm going to drop that one side. I have actually printed out one here, which shows your APM, the directions they're supposed to be spinning, as well as the configuration I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using the Hexa X. So motor one is that side. Uh, mode 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And uh, yeah, I'll put up a graphic of this one just so you can see exactly what it looks like. I have already, let's not put that sheet one side, I have already marked my signal cable so I don't know which is which. And yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and just plug them in from that side which is one this is the output side and it shows the same on this so you're going to be plugging them in that way white is your signal and black is your ground for these so my first thing is let's just get these kind of in a order and let's just put them through here since we do have this here <laughs> And that's just going to make things a little easier. So that's one on that side. There's two. There's two. So that just neatens up things even more. I like that. Okay. Wound up 
a little too much. Okay, we've got two on that side. Uh, three. Okay, I want number four now. I'm going to port number four. There we go. And, uh, five, white on top. Right, and we plug that into port number six. And there we go. Right, so we have our motors plugged in. We can actually pull all these wires down that have to be all on top here. One little cable tie. Okay. Do you want to keep wires and loose things away from your flight controller because that just introduces additional vibration and shocks and things and you don't want that because uh, it does influence the flight characteristics of your flight controller. Another cable tie ready and uh, I am going to give them a little bit of a twist just to bunch them up. I'm going to twist them back on themselves. And there we go. That's it. It doesn't have to be super tight. It's just for neatness purposes. I'm going to take this bunch and just squeeze them in there a little bit. Right. That just neatens it up slightly. And I'm happy with that. And that's it. The next step is going to be to take our receiver and find a comfortable spot for our receiver to be seated.